an Islamic school, hmm? four Muslims have resisted. So they're not content until they come and get those four. وَلَن تَرْضَ عَنْكَ الْيَهُودَ وَلَن نَصَارَ حَتَّى تَتَّبِيَ مِلْدَتَهُمْ They want to get the other four now. The ones who want to remain faithful to Allah and His Messenger. So how do they get them? They get them with something called an Islamic bank. <laughs> yes, an Islamic bank. Guess what the Islamic bank does? I have to, te I have to tell you this one before I finish. What the Islamic bank does, nine times out of ten, is to give you back door riba. Example, probably the most prominent of all examples of all the trading of the Islamic banks. In Islam, the norm of a business transaction is a cash transaction. And a credit transaction is the exception to the norm. A credit transaction would be one in which you're given time to pay, okay? The norm of a business transaction in Islam is a cash transaction. And so in Islam, market price is always cash price. Omar radiallahu ta'ala who came into the market and found a man selling his goods at less than the market price. Omar said to him, get out, raise your price or get out of our market. Hmm? You lower your price to cut the throat of your competitors. And when they collapse, then you take control of the market and you raise your price. Hmm? So, Market price is cash price. A house is on sale for a hundred thousand dollars. I don't have the hundred thousand to buy it. Islamic Bank says no problem. Islamic Bank says we'll buy it for a hundred thousand and then we'll sell it to you for four hundred thousand. What did you say? Huh? I didn't hear you. We'll buy it for a hundred thousand and we'll sell it to you for four hundred thousand. Huh? Why would I buy from you for four hundred thousand when it's on sale for a hundred thousand? If I have to buy from you cash, then someone should make an appointment for me with a psychiatrist. Huh? I, I'm, I'm mentally unsound. No, 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 you're not buying from me cash. It's a credit transaction. Oh, I see. So I pay you 400,000 and you give me 20 years to pay. Why am I paying an extra 300,000? Why? There's only one honest answer to that question. There's only one honest answer to that question. All the rest belong to the garbage bin. The only reason why I'm paying an extra $300,000 is because you've given me 20 years to pay. That's the only reason. And so time equals money. You are earning money through time and that is riba. But Islamic Bank says, no, there's no lending of money here, there's no loan. This is murabaha, murabaha, where both the buyer and the seller agree on the selling price with an increase, murabaha. No, it ain't murabaha, it's backdoor riba. Around the world today, <laughs> Islamic banks, Islamic financial institutions are peddling murabaha and declaring that this is a halal transaction and there are no shortage of muftis. If you're not, if you are comfortable with this murabaha, I have not been appointed to stop you. No. But those of you 
who can see that this is backdoor riba, you would avoid it. They didn't get you to the front door, so they won't get you to the back door. And then there is that other famous method of hiding the riba in a lease. <laughs> a lease. But the, the interest is embedded in the lease contract. The price at which you are leasing the article includes the interest in the price. And so where you think that this is a straight lease contract, a rental contract, it is more than that. It is a rental contract in which the riba is incorporated into the rental price. Do not therefore allow yourself to be trapped by backdoor riba. If we do this, if we borrow on interest, or if we lend on interest, put our money in a fixed deposit. Let me quote the last hadith and we'll now end. What are the implications for us? They can't change this hadith. No. This is Sahih hadith. The Prophet Muhammad wasalam, cursed all four. And he said that they're all equally guilty. He cursed all four. And he said that they were all equally guilty. The one who takes riba. The one who gives riba. The one who records the transaction. And the two witnesses. And he said they're all equally guilty. If they're all equally guilty, what is the implication? What is the punishment? What is the punishment for the one who is taking riba? Hmm? It is there in the last revelation. Woman Ada Faulaika Oshabunar Humfiha Khalidun. If you are taking riba, even after this revelation has come, then not only do you belong to the hellfire, but more than that, you remain there forever. Forever. That is the punishment for the one who is taking riba. What is the punishment for the one who is giving riba? He borrowed money on interest to buy a house. And even after this lecture, he would not make toba. He would not go back home and sit down with his wife and say, we have committed sin. We must get out of this. We must make toba. We must take, seek istighfar from Allah. And we have to get out of this riba as soon as we can. No, 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 no. He's not convinced. He still continues to write the check every month to pay the interest and to pay the mortgage. The Prophet said that his sin is equal <laughs> to the one who is taking riba. What about the one who is working in the bank and recording the transactions? His sin is equal to the one who is taking riba. What about the one who is witnessing the transaction? His sin is equal to the one who is taking riba, the money lender. If their sins are equal, then it follows that the punishment must be equal. They will all enter into the hellfire and they'll remain therein forever. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may look kindly upon us and help us as we seek to understand this subject and may look kindly upon us and forgive us for what we have done in the past and may look kindly upon us and help us as we try to lead our lives free from riba.